Hey everyone, Chloe here and welcome back to this feminine platform and welcome back to this channel. And if you are new here, ladies and lurkers and ear hustlers, welcome. So I wanted to further unpack and to have a very necessary conversation about shock value and about shaming and blind worship and about women's empowerment that asks the question, can we shame someone into being more successful? Can a person's life be made better through trauma bonding? And this discussion is in response to a most recent viral video of a women's empowerment coach who goes by the name of Stormy Wellington, who most recently went viral for openly embarrassing one of her clients during a three day women's weekend retreat. Now this is a conversation that was started over at the hive and shout out to the hive and shout out to the new feminine school. And I love the variety of enlightened opinions and responses that were shared by my feminine family. Amazing responses such as what's wrong with the plate? They're at a barbecue, not a state dinner. Another responder said I was done once the I am the leader came out, tough love can still be delivered constructively and with grace. This was belittlement. And finally, two things. I totally understand the message. She was looking out for her well-being and health because we all see that there is a lot of food on her plate. But, and this is just me, I would have pulled her to the side. Every lesson isn't meant to be heard or seen by other people. However, I understand what Coach Stormy was attempting. But for those of you who don't know, and for a bit of context, and for more of a backstory, take a listen for yourself. They put this on my plate. I will not let, no, I don't do what they do. I do what I do. Mm. I'm the missionary, I'm the leader. Mm. But she's I my coach. I will never eat a plate that looks like this. You mm. can pay me a million dollars to do that to myself. Mm. Oh my God. Because I deserve better than that. That's mm. low vibration. And you took it. I would have been like, I'm playing like that. I'll tell you what I want. You don't tell me what I want. So my thought process is if you put it on my plate, but I don't have to eat it. I got the discipline. I won't even look at it and look that make you look bad. I'm a queen. Queen is plate from like. Mm. If, if we said two plates, we play together. I said, who's royalty? They would say this person. Mm. I agree. That's a good way. <laughs> this is serious <laughs> shit. Yeah, because it's a lot of people that just let people give them what they want them to have, mm. and they accept mm. it. And Storm is teaching me right now. Yeah, yeah. Whole Storm is teaching me don't accept what they put on your. Mm. Now, as I mentioned at the Hypergamous Hive, and as I have discussed many times on this channel, shaming tactics that are used as a short-term teaching strategy have never been my cup of tea. But with the utmost respect to Stormy Wellington, when it comes to community, there are different strokes for different folks. And no, I do not expect every woman with a following to take my approach because women, particularly black women, will always come from all walks of life and we all will be drawn to who we are drawn to. But clearly a lot of women, particularly black women, will crave community and will often come from an environment and a background and a family history of being mistreated, ignored, neglected, abused, and mishandled, which will always set up a table for the extremely wounded to be exploited. And I truly do get that there are many black women who are desperate for visibility, who are desperate to be reparented, who are desperate for masculinity, who are desperate for leadership, who are desperate for someone to care, who are desperate for protection, who are desperate to belong. And these are the women who are usually accustomed to being belittled and shamed because these tactics in many aspects of black culture are often accepted as a very necessary evil and as a very necessary form of tough love. This shaming mindset is one of the main reasons why so many shaming gurus have popped up and have become so popular amongst black people as many of us will continue to associate a bold person's willingness to talk down on others as a form of twisted caring, which in many ways can evolve into a very distorted echo chamber of performative concern if you aren't careful, ladies. And yes, we have to acknowledge that in many aspects of black culture, that shaming is often translated into somebody caring enough about me to tell me the truth. And that tough love is considered better than no love at all. And that receiving negative affirmation is better than being invisible 
especially if you are coming from a very depressed and a very impoverished environment. And trust me, I understand because I come from very humble beginnings. But there are many more status quo aspects of black culture that will always use criticism as a way to build thicker skin. Because in a cruel, cold, and competitive world, you need a thicker skin to survive. Otherwise, the world is going to swallow you whole, chew you up, and spit you out if you aren't tough enough. But my question is, especially as it relates to this clip, where is the emotional intelligence and in shaming? And does learning how to be a forever tough cookie come at a price? And does it come at the cost of your precious and sacred femininity? Now, some feathers will be ruffled to hear this, but as a feminine woman, I have never been a huge fan of shaming because human beings and their mindsets are truly more fragile than you think. And in many ways, shaming can be highly, highly flawed because it lacks context. It encourages suppression and conformity. And in many ways, it can cause more damage because it will often do the reverse, which is to even further reduce a person's self-esteem and their self-worth. And the one thing that is never discussed in the shame hustle is that shaming on the surface may seem like a short-term, in-the-moment, effective solution, but shaming should never be confused with teaching and unlearning, and it will never address the roots of an unhealthy mindset and an unhealthy mindset is always the cause of poor decision making and unhealthy behavior. Now, I know that the people who love to argue and debate all day, or the impatient people of the world, may say that in black culture or in our community, that we don't have the time or the luxury to pamper, to spoil, to coddle, to sugarcoat, or to always handle a person with kid gloves. But shaming in many ways is like trying to put a shock value band-aid over open heart surgery. And some feathers may definitely be ruffled to hear this, but you can go argue with your wig. But there is a very thin line between constructive criticism and humiliating embarrassing a person and trauma bonding a person in a way that is belittling, condescending, and self-righteous. And not to mention the elephant in the room, but one size fits all shaming will often be used by grifters, snake oil salesmen, people who have strong pimp hand energy, cult leaders, and people who are otherwise power hungry if you are not careful. And if you are not careful, ladies, you can and will become their victims. Now, I don't believe that being wholesale abusive was Stormy Wellington's intention. And no, her platform is not about femininity, but that captured moment of correction, in my opinion, was very out of pocket and was very ugly to watch. But in Stormy's defense, even though this clip has gone viral, I do not believe that this is her entire brand. I do believe that in many aspects, she means well to her clients. But my strongest takeaway from this viral clip is that the woman on the receiving end of this teachable moment still had the emotional awareness and the emotional intelligence to receive the intent behind this message as a lesson as opposed to receiving it as an embarrassing put down. But this video is also a very strong example of what I stand by, that it isn't what you say, it is how you say it. And unfortunately, there continues to be an overload of quote unquote coaches who choose to teach and communicate through the very outdated and halfway abusive damaging practices of shaming, trauma bonding, and masculina tough love. And this is even when they mean well. So to get this conversation started, and this discussion is both open to men and women, was Stormy Wellington simply giving out a necessary dose of tough love, or was she condescending and belittling? Is it possible to speak life into someone while at the same time putting them down? Is shock therapy the only way a person can receive a lesson? Is there a time and a place for a teachable moment? When it comes to learning, do you prefer shaming tactics or gentle correction? And finally, is there such a thing as gluttony? And is there such a thing as putting too much food on your plate? Is overstuffing your plate low class and ghetto? And as always, stay tuned for more womanhood conversations to come. And I will catch up with you ladies and therapists and ear hustlers in the next one.